Hello, hello. Welcome back to another installation. What would Lou do? Today, we um, have a video inspired by a viewer, I, I believe a subscriber. Recently, we posted a video on the Shield Plus here. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up top there. Or on that video, this particular viewer commented and asked uh, if I could show an installation of one of these particular pieces that we have here. So I figured that would be a good opportunity opportunity to show you top five accessories that you can add to your shield plus to make it even more spectacular than it already is and so we're just going to start from this side of the table and work ourselves around okay so first and foremost number one i would say a holster because unless you bought this with the sole intention of just stuffing it in your sock drawer you can't just walk around carrying this you have to put it in something whether a, a lock box or or uh, a holster and so the first thing i recommend is a holster there are tons and tons and tons of brands of holsters you know and they can get pretty expensive you can get them where they have a, a what they call a sidecar i believe where it'll have a room for an extra mag i uh just went and found this one on good old scamazon this one is called the pole craft it's not anything fancy it's not really expensive i mean i think it's like 35 bucks or something like that now it didn't come with this little claw attachment i got that from uh vetter holsters and that's probably the last thing i'll ever get from them because they keep following me around on the internet ever since yeah the pole cat as i call it uh as you see right there pole craft but my nickname is pole cat it's a good holster it, like i said it's nothing fancy it's not the thickest kydex i don't know i just decided to go you know take a chance on it and i've i've liked it ever since i do like that it's enclosed a bit i don't like when the bottom is completely open this goes in an area right with your unmentionables and there can be hairs and dusts and all kind of things getting up in here so to me, it makes more sense that it would be more kind of enclosed, but a lot of them are going to be just wide open bottom. But if you got a comp on it or uh, a threaded barrel, any of that, obviously you'll want to make modifications for that. That's, the, that's probably the first thing that I would suggest anyone get is a holster. Secondly, when you get one of these, it comes with a 10 round mag and a 13 round mag. The 10 round, is going to be what's referred to as flush fit right it's going to be even with the mag rail here it's not coming down or poking out protruding or anything but this one is extended a bit now it's still flush right it's still even and uniform right there but this is the one that a lot of people like because of this extra extra grip here right however what you get is you have a bit more printing because of this extra quarter an inch of material here, right? So ideally, you want to run the 10 round mag. However, a lot of people, because this is within the scope of the Micro 9, you'll find that your pinky may hang off just a little bit now it's not like some of them where it's like this it, at least with my hands anyway i can get a full grip on it well not full but my pinky's not so far off that it's a deal breaker for me right having said that though what i would recommend is this right here this is a grip extension and it's from pierce grip uh, you can find these on scamazon as well it's not uh, what I would call cheap for a piece of plastic. It's like $11, $12 or something. There was this brand, Attack Wolf. I got three of these for maybe 15. Now you say, well, I only need one. Well, you may get more magazines later on. And if you break one, you know what I mean? Because I mean, at the end of the day, it's just plastic and you're going to be dropping these magazines if you're training with them like you should be. You know, you're going to really boom, 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 boom and dropping it and reloading others right so it would be the better thing to have backups at least now i believe even uh the pierce grip has an option to where you can get uh three for around the same price if they still have that deal i will link that in the description this is the main part that the viewer was wanting to see 
Goodness. This is the grip. You can see it's pretty smooth here, but then right there where your pinky will go, it's rough texture. They did pretty good at matching it, I think. And this is the main one I run. Let's just go ahead and show you how to install these. Pretty simple. I use it like to take something blunt but not sharp, not like a screwdriver or anything, you know, so you don't scratch this up. So you just take and press, press the button in. Okay. So once you have that, that, this little tab depressed, you just hold that and then you slide that off. Okay. And you take the other one and slide it up on there and you'll hear a click and uh, there you go. That's all there is to it. And like I said, I think they did a really good job at, you know, kind of uh, making this blend in and look, look natural. Now it does have a, a small bit of a gap here, but I don't know what it is, but all magazines have that. I guess they leave that so you can get a fingernail in there if you had to pull it because even, even this one, right? You see, you feel like it should be there, but then if you let it go, you know, and this is with all, all models that I have, whether from Smith and Wesson, Sig, Glock, it doesn't matter. They all have that. So I'm guessing that's probably in case that that thing gets stuck in there, you can kind of get a fingernail or something in there to pry it out. So that's all there is to that. For comparison, you see the difference, right? This is Tack Wolf and this is Pierce Grips. Right, how I was saying that this one is more textured all over. Now, this is actually a complete ripoff of the Pierce Grips. I didn't know that at the time. But if you look here, PG for Pierce Grips. Now, this is their logo, but they took that off of there. And you can see it kind of dips down. So basically, they took this piece, made a mold out of it, and just sanded that down. But they didn't change the, the model number, right? Because you've got PG, which Pierce Grip, and then MPPL. So I just figured out, uh, looking at this, what this, this stands for, right? MP is the M and P, and then the PL is for plus, right? So M and P show plus, right? So... That is exactly what they did here. They definitely uh, stole that stole that uh, design, but uh, that's that. The third thing that I suggest that you get is also from Pierce Grip, and I believe I got this as well from Scamazon. A grip insert, grip plug is another name for them. And what does a grip plug do? Well, you see that most times when you get a Pustola, it will have this hole in the bottom. Now, not all of them do this. For instance, SIG, they have that filled in. Now, I don't know if they've done that forever, but the other models I have, like the Shield Plus, 43X, my Glock 19, right? All those have this opening here. And from what I can tell, the only function here is to save on material. Now, some people try to say, well, oh, this is so if your magazine gets stuck, you know, you can get a finger in there. There's really no chance to do this. Another thing, right, this is in your holster down this way. And so dust, uh, lint, hair, skin, you know, whatever is going to be going, to sweat even, is going to be dripping down right on here. This needs to be closed off because... There is a channel here and it can run right in to areas you don't want it in, okay? And so that's why another thing, and plus it's aesthetically pleasing, uh, which, you know, I'm big on with my OCD self. <laughs> oh, quick word now. This is, says the shield. There's a reason for that because it doesn't quite fit. You do have to do a bit of finagling, but I found a way to do it without having to use any kind of adhesive, any kind of glue, you know, any, any of that stuff, right? And so basically, this is it. This goes in here like that. 
Now, when you first get it, it's going to be very loose. It's going to be just sliding in and out, right? So what I did was I took this screwdriver and I stuck it up inside of it like this. You see how it spread that apart, right? And I stuck it way down on there. Just like that. And then from here, I just took a heat gun and heated the plastic to where it expanded and got, you know, used to that shape. And then I took it and just held it under some cool water for a minute and harden it. And then boom, it was ready to go. See, now it sits there and it doesn't, it doesn't come out. And just like that, that hole is now closed off. There's nothing that can get up in here. It's safe and sound and good to go, right? The last occupant actually on the table here. Uh, right here, we have the Streamlight. Now, Streamlight, there, now there's a ton of brands that you can go with. You can go with uh, Streamlight, Olight, uh, Surefire. Uh, but Streamlight is about the most reliable and most affordable option that I have had experience with. Because this doesn't have the pick rail, you know, you can't use like the PL Mini or anything like that. That would be great if you could use something like that. But uh, because it doesn't have the, the rail here, you just use ones that go around the uh, trigger guard there. The one I recommend is the Streamlight, the TLR6. It's 100 lumens, which a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's nothing. You know, I want a 500 or a 1,000. You know, it's like there is a point of diminishing return. You, you, you don't want too bright a light to where you wash out a room or, you know what I mean? So this is good enough to hit someone in the eyes, to light up a room. And uh, I've not had any issues with any of these. And I have quite a few of them. They do have an option with a laser, but this is the non-laser version. And these come in about 70, 75 bucks. So I'll show you how to put this on too while we're at it. Uh, it's pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Here's the light, right? That's what it looks like. And it comes with the batteries. I would prefer that it be rechargeable, but um, you can't have everything, I guess. And so the way that this works, it's got a little door here, three screws right here. Now, the one thing I will say about these screws is that uh, they could be of better quality. If you try to turn these things too tight you can easily strip the insides okay so got that pull that out and this right here is the light itself that's the actual brain of it and the rest of it's just a shell and so it's got this little groove right here it goes around the trigger guard right there then you sit this back in and then these go in there as well go ahead put your batteries in they go up like that verify everything works yep okay all right and usually i just do this to get them started and then again like i said you got to be careful that you don't over torque these because it is just going into plastic after all that's another thing i would suggest that they change is do a metal housing because that would actually put a little more weight on the front which would help keep the muzzle down when you're firing the more weight you have the less it's going to want to pop pop up right so that's it right and that's how it looks right pretty nice i think as far as this one goes it has an option to you can hold the button right you don't have to click it but you can click it the, the laser version it has a, a couple different configurations where you can have the light the laser or the light and the laser but this one like i said is just the light i don't really care about a laser so uh that's that's what i stick on there that's everyone on the table now number five if you've got the base model i mean the absolute base model that's gonna have white dot sight is to upgrade the sights night sights is where it's at and it's not just because it's trendy, because it's actually functional. I try to mainly stay in the realm of functionality rather than 
aesthetics alone. But sometimes, sometimes I will I'll venture out of of that zone and be like, yeah, I just like the way this this looks. These, however, all these things I'm recommending are purely functional. But the sights on these things are killer, man. This version has uh, an orange dot, and these are pretty much blacked out during the day. I don't think you can see that right now. You pretty much are seeing them glow. But during the day, they're pretty much blacked out, and all you see is that orange dot right there. It's very easy to pick, pick it up with your eye. But then when it gets dark, you see that they glow. You can see those really well. If you got the base model, I would suggest that you upgrade those sights to, to Tritium Night Sight. Even, even the fiber optic sights, you know, would be better than just the white dot. You can get a good set of sights from Smith & Wesson themselves or either... Uh, True Glow, I believe, is, is one. There are Ameriglows, you know. Those are um, some, some pretty good options as far as that. That's basically the top five accessories I suggest that will make your Shield Plus perform even better. We had a bonus one. And the reason I put number six at the end was because it's the most expensive of any of these options. Red Dot and Optics. This particular model is the optics ready version. It's got this plate. You just take these two screws out, take this little plate off. And you can put your red dot in there. I don't have one to show you here. I did attempt to get one a couple of weeks ago, but it was not the correct size. It was a hollow sun uh, four or seven. I don't remember the exact model because there's so many variations in those things. I wind up getting the wrong size. It was more for like a, uh, a full size pustola or maybe even a rifle i don't know and so i sent it back and i haven't ordered another one because i have i have irons and other fires and a red dot at these distances are mm, not necessary now if you really want that and that's you know you want to go with that trend that fad and uh you feel like it's gonna help you really hone in on that target and you know be able to you know put the metal to the skeletal you know <laughs> um, like quickly then yeah you probably want to get that over say the light for instance right that might be more useful to you for me this is to me is going to be far more useful than uh, a red dot have i scratched it off my list no i do intend to get one it's just not right now for this one for the hollow sun anyway you it does require that you get a plate now i didn't i bought the plate and the optic but obviously they didn't fit together now i'll try to leave a link to the the plate that i purchased off of scamazon it was very good quality the only thing is i don't know how high it raised the optic to see if you could still use the iron sights because that's another thing a lot of people don't take into consideration is that most times when you go and get an optic you're gonna have to update your sights as well so you can easily be looking at four or five hundred dollars just to have a red dot right so to me, you know, if you really, really, really got to have that thing, I would definitely, you know, save, save, save and, and be sure that that's what you want, man. Because a lot of these things, they, they're getting harder and harder to return and and to, to even get all your money back. Like a lot of times, you know, you uh, you order something offline, for for instance, with Palmetto State Armory. That's actually where I ordered that optic from. It was on sale and I wound up paying like two, 204, 209, I don't remember exactly, but I wound up getting like 90, 190 back, like 194, 190 something, right? So they didn't give me my tax and they didn't give me the the shipping back. And I had to pay to ship it back to them, right? So that's one reason I prefer dealing with Scamazon because I don't have to deal with that hassle. These smaller companies, man, they, they nickel and dime you to death. And that's one reason, you know, I've 
kind of strayed away from them unless I absolutely have to go to them. Now, I know a lot of people are going to give me grief about that. Oh, support the little man. But hey, I'm the little man too, right? And they're not, they're not worried about me. They're trying to get every little nickel and dime they can out of me, you know? So supporting corporations and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it's all going into the same B system anyway, right? So what does it matter? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have this model, like I said, this is, you know, some of the things I suggest that you get to make your, your experience all the much better. I mean, it really has impacted the way that I feel with this one uh, big time. Um, I carry this every day with this holster, with this light, with this grip extension, with this grip plug. Uh, this right here is my setup and it has not failed me. It has not done me wrong. And all this really didn't cost me a whole lot of money, you know, so that's another plus for me. And I, you know, and we're not like those YouTubers that get sent things and we can, oh, we just got to go buy a holster or, or a light or something like that, right? You got to buy this and a light and a holster and, and, and an optic and all that. Next thing you know, man, cha-ching, your pockets are empty. So if you found this video helpful, we ask that you strike that like, swell that bell, subscribe and buy with us, and make us feel all appreciated and whatnot. We appreciate you guys for watching. As we always say, seek it the Lord while it may be found, call upon him while he is near, because he is near unto those that be of a broken heart and save such that be of a contrite spirit. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So cast yourselves down before the Lord and he will lift you up. Until next time, take care and God bless.